Aloha all, this is Samana with Unconventional Insights. This is my first podcast ever. The fact that you're hearing this is a miracle. I don't have a millennial bone in my body. I am not a techie. I am a warrior with unconventional insights that I'm here to share with you. A little bit about my background. I've been an esthetician since my late teens, and through that, I worked in Beverly Hills, and then I moved to Maui, and I opened a holistic esthetician school. I opened a massage school. I had a day spa. I worked with clients. I taught. I did workshops. I started doing counseling about 25 years ago, and I wrote several articles in the health and wellness magazines in Maui. I just recently finished a book, so I am looking to get that published, and that's a whole nother adventure I'm learning about. Writing the book was the easiest, trust me. It's finding an agent and a publisher that's a little more challenging, but I'm taking it on, just like I am these podcasts. And my motivation for these podcasts are to educate people and to give them insights into things that nobody talks about. So through all these years, I have had so many clients and students say, where can I get more information about this? So now is the time. I'm giving you whatever we can. We're going to have a variety of different episodes. I am totally open to ideas. If there are specific things my audience wants to hear about, you're welcome to email me at samana at spaluna, S-P-A-L-U-N-A dot com. That's my email. And please send me a line and say what you'd like to hear about. And if it's something in my scope. I will clearly talk about it. Today, this episode is called Cutting Ties, and I'll get to that in a moment. And and other things that I am wanting to do. So I am in Austin, Texas now. I'm no longer on Maui, and I've been here for four years, moved here with my daughter, and she lives nearby, and my dad lives nearby, and I live with three Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. I teach workshops in-house, and I do Zoom online uh, educating workshops for skincare and for um, holistic anything. So in September, I have a four-week, my famous 30-day cleanse that I've done forever and ever in groups and in Maui and in workshops, and I guarantee to change your life in those 30 days. So if it's about wanting to lose weight balance your body, feel inspired, clear yourself out, improve your health, improve your mind, improve your vitality. I would highly recommend you looking at that. And you could look at my website, spaluna.com. It has my upcoming workshops. I'm also um, going to teach uh, with a co-partner in November. We're doing a relationship workshop. So at one point, I'm going to do a podcast with David And you will see he'll come on and we will talk about, he's going to talk from the male perspective about what's happening in the world with men and their challenges and and their wants and needs and insecurities and who they are on this planet with everything changing all the time. And I will give the balance point for women and we'll just talk about how to get along nicely together, how to do this in a lot more harmonious way. And yes, so now throughout the years, my counseling involved, it kind of went into a large scope. I had trouble for years trying to brand myself because every time I'm like, okay, I want to take people to the gym. This is my whole thing. My biggest high is getting people to work out and exercise and sculpting their body and getting their hormones balanced and stuff, I'm going to do that. But then I'm like, no, that's not quite it. Let's get into supplements. People need to like have a diet that's specific for their specific body types, for their lifestyle, for their needs, as well as they need supplements because we could only get so much from our food. And I started on that for a while. And then I'm like, no, this is about spiritual things. They have to have meditation and they have to have like uh, 
journaling exercises and they have to do all of these things. And then I'm like, no, it's not quite that either. So what I found is it wasn't that it wasn't one thing, it was all of those things. So my actual next podcast is talking about the five-pointed star method, which I basically talk about each point to bring a balance in and how we stay whole. And um, I love relationship counseling and issues with relationship being a Libra. I see everything in terms of relationship, regardless if it's with a intimate romantic partner or if it's with family or friends or roommates or co-workers or whatever. That's very important. I'm excellent working with uh, detoxing and addiction issues, people that are lost with soul purpose, not knowing who they're supposed to be in their highest way. I'm your girl. I'll help you hopefully through these sessions and you're always welcome to call and do a counseling session with me. And depression, anxiety, suicide, all of that. I've worked with all of that. So my background is not um, from a university. My background is from the university of life. I say that God certified me. The universe certified me. So there you go. So moving forward. Let's see how we can do this, getting to our topic of cutting ties. So the motivation or inspiration, I should say, to do this first podcast on this topic was I did a counseling session with a client of mine a couple weeks ago, and she has recently ended a relationship, a romantic relationship that was quite devastating to her. And she was, she's fairly conscious and healthy and also does coaching and various things. And she was just struggling. She was in a really dark place. And so we did a session on the phone and I started talking to her and I saw, okay, you're doing all the things that are correct, but you're still depleted and sad and your mind's foggy and you can't move forward and all the signs of being stuck So I asked her if she understood about cording and aka cords. So living in Hawaii 30 years, we there's a a term called aka, aka, which is a cord. So in our body, we have what are called chakras, and those are energy centers of the body. And we have seven in the physical body. So we start with the crown of the head. And we have that chakra, and then we have between the eyebrows, that's called the third eye. We have right at the throat, that's for communication and throat issues and manifesting. We have the heart chakra, we have the solar plexus, we have right around the belly button, that's the second chakra, and then we have the root chakra. And basically each of those chakras have to do with different parts of the body, physical, the organs, and the functioning of the body, and it also has to do with subtler bodies and the emotions and the spiritual implications and colors and all this wonderful stuff. So it's kind of more holistic and vast. And when we are in a relationship with someone, oftentimes we have what's called a cording where we draw this this if we could see in that realm we'd actually see this cord attached from whatever chakra to that person let's say for instance it's a romantic partnership so there would be a cord from my root chakra to their root chakra and perhaps because of the sexual connection that that's the cord the cord could be as thick and and enforced looking like a tree trunk or it could look like a little thin like subtle thread of a cord but either way it's an energetic cord we have healthy cords and we have unhealthy cords and the difference is so this is a couple things to explain to you so unhealthy cords are when we feel depleted from the interaction with that person. So we have a, our mind is foggy, our vitality is depleted. Um, many things are blocked in our, in our, we can't function to our highest way. So healthy cords are when it's like a connection with our children or our pets or various things or, or in healthy partnerships and there's a cord and it's like from my heart to his heart and and all of that stuff. And it's this wonderful thing and it's a reciprocated thing. So there are healthy and unhealthy cords. So I told her 
to visualize, and you can do this as you're listening to this if you're in a relationship that seems a little toxic right now, and try to see what part of the body do you think, which organ or which, which area of the body feels like it's most involved, that's depleted, like is it your emotional state, or again, your mind is foggy, or vitality, and or your sense of self feeling like you're strong and independent, and and all of those. So visualize where you would think this cord would be to this other person. And then think of a weapon, something that's powerful for you. I started doing this in my early 20s, and it was instantly a sword that I saw. And it, this came to me, my own guides told me this little practice. And so you could see a sword, a saber, a wand, a blowtorch, whatever your weapon is. And starting at the top of the head to visualize, we'll say a sword just for the sake of it, and visualize that going from the top of the head down the front of the body on all sides and down through to the feet, lift up both feet and cut under the feet and come up the back of the body, through the base of the spine, up the back, both sides of the arm again coming back, swirling around the head. So see it as the whole sphere of you is being cut of any cords that could be connected to anyone. I often say, I say a little practice where I ask to remove any unhealthy, negative, depleting Akka cords from any person from past, present, or future that is not for my highest good. That's one of the things that I have said in my like meditation rituals and doing that. So you cut these Akka cords. But what is important to know is it's not a one-shot deal. So when we're doing these Akka chords, I'm going to talk a little bit about skin here. So my history of skin, I've learned the whole world by learning about the body. So on a physiological level, we have the birth of what I call the mother cell that happens just above the dermis, the true skin, in at the base of the epidermis, and it begins to form. And it has all of its habits and patterns and ways of living. And it takes about 28 days to 30 days to come to the surface of the skin, and then it naturally sloughs off and will start again. Like it's never a time where, of course, we don't have skin. We're constantly sloughing off and rejuvenating from birth to death our skin. So that 30-day cycle is profound for we humans on many levels, and this is physiologically why. If we want to break an unhealthy pattern or incorporate a positive habit, we need to do a task or eliminate or um, abstain from using or drinking or smoking or texting or something for 30 days in order for once these Akka cords are cut to completely have a separation, a healthy separation. So with the 30 days of doing this every day, remembering this every day, Another um, point of the 30 days, so looking at this pattern, so basically a woman's menstrual cycle is 21 to 28 days. We have the phases of the moon is basically 28 days. We have the tides that come in and out. We have billing cycles. How about that? Yeah, that's a funny one. Okay, billing cycles also 28 to 30 days. So 30 days are big for us. I've taken many, many people to their first AA, Alcohol Anonymous, or NA meetings. And it is a big deal to not use or drink or whatever for 30 days. And after 30 days consistently of not using, not drinking, not doing the pattern, they get a 30-day chip. And this is a big celebration. This is a big accomplishment to achieve that 30-day. Because what's known in the program, the brilliant, wonderful program of AA, is that if you could go 30 days without using by incorporating other positive things, such as going to regular meetings daily, sometimes three and four meetings if you need to, that there is a high probability 
if you continue doing healthy steps on a daily basis, that you will never go back into that bad habit. So back to my client, I told her to cut these ACA cords, but it is imperative to not have any contact with her ex for 30 days because it will make it harder to keep the ACA cord away, to keep it severed permanently. So this means even if he texts her and she reads it but doesn't respond, so no contact at all, and that's hard. So what I've told clients when they're dealing with unhealthy relationships to, I mean, if it's if they're toxic and just intrusive and they don't care about you, I want you to basically block them. You could block them on social media, block them on your phone. I just love that feature. That technology I do know. But if it's something where you just both have agreed to go your own ways and maybe in time you could be friends or have some form of fond feelings or relationship, then you just say, I'm doing this process and please respect me and do not contact me for the next 30 days. And if you don't trust that, then block them. So no interaction for 30 days while we go through this process of this healing inside. So during this 30 days, there is a phenomena somewhere between 21 and 28 days that they call it a healing crisis. So in the years that I've worked with clients for their skin, if they had acne, if they had, you know, we were doing anti-aging, if we were doing muscle toning, if we were, whatever we were doing. If I was working with a client that was doing my 30-day cleanse, which I'm doing that in September, I'm going to put that pitch in there again for four weeks, 30 days we're doing it, guaranteed to change your life. Anyways, whatever they were doing for 30 days, right around the 21 to 28 days. So say they were doing very good and they were coming in for their appointments every week or for massage because they had pain and different things. So here they're coming in for a series once a week and I tell them they need to come in for this series a minimum of four weeks, if not eight or 10 weeks. So I tell them in the consultation, if we're counseling, if we're doing treatments for skin, if we're doing cleanses if we're doing massage. I will say to them, somewhere around the 21st to 28th day, you will wake up in the morning and say, I don't want to come in for my appointment. Or maybe I do just want one drink. Or maybe I'll just check in and text because I'm lonely and I want to see what he's up to. Because what is happening is on a cellular level, the cell is coming to the end of its life cycle which would be at that 28 to 30 days. And as soon as it's at the end of its cycle and it dies off, it's going to an area that it, it is unfamiliar with. So the mind likes to be in a familiar pattern. The mind likes to be in a position where it understands what it's known before. Even if it was toxic, even if you do yell at each other all the time or you're tired, you're just used to being tired, but it's familiar and it doesn't take any effort to change. So knowing that healing crisis is pos possible between the 21st and 28 days, for instance, for the estheticians out there, if we're doing like an acne treatment and they come in every week, right at the third to fourth week, they'll come in and they say, I look worse than when I started with you. And I say to them without skipping a beat, you're right on schedule. Remember when we talked about that 21 to 28 days, you are right there. So basically we are seeing what the mother cell looks like because it's on the surface, because it's visible to us. And after this treatment, this day or this counseling or this session, this is the end of that cycle, and we're going into new territory. So if you just push through that little, I don't want to get up and go to the gym today, even though I've been so good the last three weeks, make yourself go anyways, because what's happening is I'm trying to explain on all levels, psychological, physiological, emotional, every level, the body wants what's familiar, and we want to program something new.
So, now we are talking about, let's see, what else are we talking about? Okay, so now let's talk about not just uh, an unhealthy relationship and breaking patterns with that. Let's talk about an unhealthy thing like drinking or smoking or not working out or raging or something that doesn't have to do with another person. It just has to do with us. So I have some clients that I've worked with that their nature is they're fierce. They're fierce warriors. They get to a point where they're all, my life isn't working. I want to change this. It's why I'm coming to you and I'm ready to do this. And they have all the strength and power and conviction to go forward and they just need to know the steps to do it. And they do it. And that's very good. But I've also more commonly have had clients that they know that they need to incorporate an exercise practice or they need to stop eating fast foods or they need to stop drinking or smoking and they don't have the internal um, passion or motivation to do it. So they're just beating themselves up. It's just a self-sabotage. They're just like, I'm a loser, I can't do it. And it's just, they're spinning in a very bad cycle. So this is a universal law that I explain to people. This is very important to know. If we look at all things, all beings, all people, all animals, all sentient beings, all things that breathe, they have 100%. If we were to draw a circle on a board and say that that circle is 100% energy and it represents us, and that's a fact. No one can be 70% energy or 99% energy. Everything that exists that is live is 100% stuffed in that circle, 100% energy, regardless of what's in that circle. I've done exercises with clients and students saying to draw on a piece of paper around the circle, what, how much percent of what do you think is filling that circle? That's also a very good exercise. Like, okay, I work 30%, you know, I'm playing with my kids, uh, I go out and party, I write, I go to the gym, whatever it is. But to put how much percent of your life, I watch TV, I'm online, I'm on my phone, I'm texting. How much percent of that 100%, even in one day, in one week, do you put in that circle? What are you made of? So now I say, if you don't have the courage or the discipline to just do this new program, to break this pattern, either incorporating something positive or eliminating something, then try to allow universal law to work in your favor. And this is how you do it. You start to write a list of positive things that you will commit to consistently for this 30 days that you'll introduce. It could be as simple as if your diet is shit and you normally don't eat well at all, that you promise to eat a salad every day, or you'll eat a banana or an apple or some type of fresh something God made every day. So that could be one thing. Maybe you'll do a 10-minute journaling exercise. That could be another thing. Maybe you'll do some form of exercise for five minutes. Maybe you'll meditate for five minutes. So the timing, like how many minutes you do something, isn't so much a factor when I first start working with someone, when we're trying to change patterns. It's just the consistency of doing it. But if you commit to 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, stick to that. Because the body is like a child. It's our inner child. It likes consistency. It likes habits. It loves all that stuff. So on a daily basis, you're going to write that list of what positive things you will commit to do for yourself and incorporate that in your life. And what you will find in about five days or so that you instantly don't have the craving for the cigarette. I didn't even think about him today for the first time. I don't even want that ice cream. I didn't even 
think about putting TV on because I had such a full experience. I was doing so much and so active and high today that I didn't even want to watch my recorded programs. And that's how it works, by stuffing in higher vibrational positive elements into your 100% total energy. The lower vibrational elements automatically will fall away and they just they just eliminate. You no longer have use for them and it falls away in a natural um, process. So similar to AA, how that works is they have meetings all over, all day long. You could go to five meetings in a day and basically instead of drinking at a bar or shooting up or doing heroin, you go to a meeting in place of that, again, Here's my 100%. Instead of drinking, I'm going to go to a meeting and I'm going to sit with like-minded people and we're going to talk about how we're doing this one day at a time, how we are moving forward one step at a time. And that is how that works. That's how, wait a minute, I didn't even want to drink today. I didn't even want a soda. I didn't even want my whatever it was, milkshake, whatever the issues are. So that is a a kind way of breaking bad habits or incorporating better habits, naturally. I want to also get back to cutting these cords. So there was a, something that came up personally. So my stepmother had, uh, she's now passed, but she was very close to me. She came in my life when I was 11, and I often say that she was a lot of who I am because of her. Um, I love who I am. I'm the counselor, the teacher a lot because of her. And she never did anything extraordinary with me, but she was there consistently and she showed up. She showed me about consistency. Just show up. Even if you don't know what you're going to say, even if you don't have a plan, if you don't know what you're going to do, just consistently show up. And she showed me through that act of being consistent, always being there for when I wanted to talk, for whatever I needed, to know that that's what she does, that we built trust. And I love her very much to this day for that. So she unfortunately had Alzheimer's and it came on quickly at a young age for her and was overwhelming to my father and her and us and everyone who loves her, her friends and family. And at one point when it started to get bad, very bad, where she couldn't drive anymore and would forget where she lived and different things and would have a lot of anxiety when she couldn't remember things, I told them to come to Maui and there was a cottage on my property and for them to move there. And even though I had my business and couldn't close those and I was so busy that I love her and I would try to help my dad with her if I could. So they moved to Maui and I found in, and I have a fairly healthy lifestyle as much as I work all the time, did work all the time. My lifestyle is even better now, but I, it was a healthy lifestyle. I didn't drink too much. I exercised, did all the good stuff, meditated when I could. So Nance shows up. And she would come over with her big smile. She recognized me and it would be very loving. And I'd hug her and we'd talk about something fun and I'd feed her and she loved eating little sweets and stuff. And, and then I found that I started to get very tired. So two things were happening. My energy felt like I was sucked dry. I was depleted out of nowhere. And my lower back started hurting. Like there was a knife in my back is how it felt. And I didn't have any injury or trauma. I'd, I'd, I had no idea what was happening here. And I would do my little morning meditation. And it took me about the fifth day of them being on the island and her coming in and being around the house that I realized it came up in my meditation that she and I, that there's an aka cord that unconsciously she has hooked into my root chakra, into my tailbone area, this kind of support system, like I'm someone that made her feel safe, someone that she recognized, someone that she needed to ground with. 
and she corded into me, not consciously, this was an un unconscious thing, but because I could tell where the pain was in my body and felt the energy depletion, I knew this was happening and it was strong in my meditation. So I instantly took out my sword and cut the cords. And as I was cutting the cords, what came to me was, like, should I be cutting these cords? Like, she needs me. She's always been there for me. And if this is making her feel safe, then shouldn't I keep those cords there? So two things came up. First off, if you're depleted and in pain, then it is not necessarily something you're supposed to sacrifice for because we're here to always stay in alignment and in balance and in our, you know, our path of whatever that means for vitality and health. And the other thing is, is if there's karma, if there is, if that cord is supposed to be there, there is no power. We as humans have no power higher than God or the universe or the will of karma to eliminate something if there is still a lesson or a teaching in there. And sometimes we just have to endure and breathe one breath at a time throughout our day until the time of karma, until the time of the lesson between you and a person or you and an addiction or you and something is ready to free us because we learned every single last drop we could from this encounter. And that is why we're here. We're on this big human planet and we're here in this classroom learning and we can learn in joyous ways and oftentimes we learn most in depleting ways, in exhausting ways, in toxic ways, through that adversity, through that contrast that we learn so much about ourselves that until we had that disaster, that crisis, that conflict, that isolation come up in our lives, we didn't know what we had inside of ourselves to come out and meet that opportunity to say, I'm a badass, like, should I live through that? Like, this is how I handled it. It knocked me down, but I got up from that wave. And I figured it out. Like, I endure. I'm a Clydesdale. I keep going forward. So knowing all that, knowing that determination, that there is nothing. So the fear of should you cut an aka cord, is it fair? If it's a karmic thing, if God or the universe says you're not done with that, then unfortunately, you're not done with that, no matter how many times you cut it. But I would still recommend the 30 days, every single day, every single day, and keeping your space and no interaction from that person so they can't hook into you. Because I've seen in so many counseling sessions, and even in relationships when I was younger that weren't as healthy as they could be or as I wanted them to be, but I always learn something wonderful and I appreciate all my teachers and love them for what I learned, um, is that we basically are here to learn something from it and it's usually that adversity that we learn it from. We don't often learn when something is just given to us and something is happy-go-lucky and yeah, someone just offered this stuff to me. It's like, isn't that wonderful? But if I don't work for it, if I don't struggle, it's not, I didn't earn it. It's kind of where our mentality goes sometimes. So, okay, cutting cords. What else do I need to add to that? Let us see. Okay, so just remember on a daily so be it, if your thing is, as soon as you get up in the morning, like think of what's your power time. I'm a person that I've always been, like I love morning. And I'm usually up just before sunrise. That's my favorite time of day. And I've even told clients and classes and all of that, that I'm solar powered. So I do love the sun, even though I'm an esthetician also. And I know the products and the equipment to use to keep me youthful. But I know that when the sun's up, my mind is sharpest, my vitality is sharpest. It's when I work out. But if you're an evening person, then that's going to be the time you do your cord cutting. Like my daughter, has, she was born at night. She's an evening person. She could stay up late. It doesn't phase her. She doesn't like getting up early. She likes going to bed late. And it's just who she is by nature, if she was allowed 
to do that with her work schedule. Anyway, so someone like that, I would say, when you get home from work, when you get home from school, at the end of the day, before you go to bed, you take a moment and you even write post-its to remind yourself, cut the cords, and you do that little, it takes two seconds, just do the little ceremony, cut the cord, and see yourself free. See yourself free floating, just like with all the vitality, all the beauty you have, all the life force, all the resources you want, that nothing's depleting you. It's all yours, and it's all contained within you. And do that regularly, and do your 30 days. Mark a calendar. I have my little desktop Zen calendar, and basically when I do something for that, when I'm doing a pattern, either a breaking a pattern or a process or establishing a new habit, I will mark 30 days and I will count down. So every day that I rip the thing off and read my fun little thing for the day, I see, okay, I have 21 days left of this cleanse. Okay, I have 13 days left of this cleanse. This isn't too bad. This isn't too bad. It's like, and no, I don't miss him, and this is fine, and I'm finding other things to fill that space. So everything is working out. And I'm going to close with Reminding anyone that wants to look up my website, spaluna.com, and you could see my workshops and various things, and to write my email, samana at spaluna.com, and tell me topics that you want to hear on these podcasts, because as I said, I have some fun things coming up that we are going to discuss but I am open to things. And if you want to be one of the guests doing a counseling session, email me or PM me. Find me on social media, Samana Benedetti, and just say, I'm your person, and we'll come up with some fun little name that you'll be anonymous. They will hear your voice. So I don't know if there's a way, if I could figure out this editing to, like, mask your voice. We can do that. But whatever it is, like raw and real, like this is unconventional insights. I want you to just like spill it all because the more we could reveal our authentic raw nature and share that, it helps other people. And that's totally my motivation on the planet is to share my own process and my own healing and that this too shall pass. So I've enjoyed doing this podcast and... I hope you enjoyed it also. Tell your friends unconventional insights and listen. And I'm going to attempt to put these up every Thursday. So once a week, I'm committing to you. Thank you and aloha.